The New York Times reports that the White House is reviewing an updated Pentagon plan that could send more than 100,000 troops to the Middle East if Iran attacks U.S. forces. President Trump had a clear message to Iran from the Oval Office yesterday. Hearing little stories about Iran, if they do anything, they will suffer greatly. We'll see what happens with Iran. Joining us now is James Clapper, former director of national intelligence in the Obama administration. He's now a CNN national security analyst. First off, what does it mean that the national security team was presented with new Pentagon plans, a contingency plan for 120,000 troops to deploy to the Middle East? What are these types of plans, General? Well, I, I'm surmising. I don't know that uh, this may have been the uh, top end of perhaps a series of options from uh, a lesser mm -hmm. deployment to a greater deployment. 120,000 troops obviously is a massive deployment. That's Iraq war troop. Leader. Exactly. And I, I was serving as the chief of Air Force Intelligence uh, in 1990, 1991, and I, I couldn't help but recall that era when the uh, then Bush administration did a lot of public preparation for a massive deployment to restore uh, Kuwait sovereignty. And there's been none of that for a uh, deployment of, of that size. We're going to send our sons and daughters off uh, to a potential broad Mideast war. You, you would think there'd be more preparation publicly uh, to educate the public about why this is necessary. And... Uh, I hope that they're not contemplating a ground invasion or any of that, anything of that sort. But 120,000 additional, presumably, air and naval forces over and above what's already there, which is quite substantial, is massive. D does the presentation of that type of plan indicate any increased likelihood that it will actually happen? Well, <clears throat> there is always the likelihood if you have, uh, you know, our forces and Iranian forces in proximity to one another, there's always the opportunity for an accidental encounter that could be become incendiary. Do you think that's more likely now, given the heightened rhetoric between the two countries? Well, it could be. I mean, uh, depending on where these forces are deployed, and particularly if, if we bolster our presence in the Strait of Hormuz, uh, that heightens the, the probability for an inadvertent uh, encounter between Iranian and U.S. forces. So... Just because of the numbers, the probability goes up. That's what the Europeans have actually been warning over the last 24 hours. Their fear is, with this heightened rhetoric from the White House and the Iranians and the increased naval presence now of the U.S. Uh, in the Straits and in the Gulf, that maybe something could go wrong. Well, not to magnify this or be hyperbolic about it, but uh, clearly if there is a deployment of this, it won't all occur in one day. It'll be gradual, and I'm quite sure the Pentagon will be very attentive to the rules of engagement on how to avoid such inadvertent uh, encounters. But uh, I think the European concerns well taken. So one development over the last 12 hours is we learned that the U.S. Attorney General William Barr has appointed the U.S. Attorney from Connecticut to investigate the origins of the Russia investigation. You, of course, were the director of national intelligence at the beginning of the investigation. Do you think this kind of investigation is warranted? Well, I guess you're going to have to stand in the line, take a number to do an uh, investigation of the investigators. There's already one substantial investigation, which, as I understand, is nearing completion, being conducted, led by the Department of Justice Inspector General. So uh, if it were me, I'd, I'd wait for the outcome of that to determine if there need to be yet more investigations. But now we're starting other investigations before that one is completed. And, John, point I have to make here is we're kind of losing sight of what was uh, the cause of all this, the predicate for all this, was the Russians and the Russian engagement. Uh, and now we know uh, apparently dozens of cases where Russian operatives, some of whom were known to be have intelligence connections, were trying to engage with the Trump campaign. That's what uh, the concern was and was a predicate for, for any of these investi this investigation. The Russians were attacking the U.S. election system. Exactly. And it, on, a, on a rather massive scale, uh, through social media, through the RT. Uh, so, and we saw, uh, I say we, as part of the prior administration, uh, all these encounters between uh, members of the Trump camp and, and the Russians. And the focus was, what is going on here with the Russians? I mean, the message I almost take away from this is, well, we should have ignored that. 
Well, that was a, a profound threat and still is uh, to our electoral system. And I wish people would pay more attention to volume one of the Mueller report, the exhaustive detail about what the Russians did. And we're losing sight of that. Director James Clapper, it's always a pleasure to have you here, especially in studio. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, John.